Chair of Prime Headquarters. I am sitting here with two of our council members, uh, Daniel Marotz and Damon Honeycutt. Uh, General Sun uh, is known as is known in the lightsaber world. And we are chatting here about um, something uh, that uh, kind of comes up a whole lot. It's something that's really uh, important for the lightsaber um, gestalt, as it were. And that is uh, performance and martial arts. Um, now, before we begin this particular discussion, we'll, I want to parse out a couple of little definitions here because everybody's going to have a little bit of a different definition of what they're talking about. What we're talking about here is the very kind of simplistic ideas. Martial art being systems of learning, techniques involved with fighting, violence, conflict, that kind of thing, right? Physical and performance as in actions done for the benefit of an onlooker, um, audience, opponent, what have you. The reason we're doing this is because a lot of times what will come up is because lightsaber has so much theatrical aspects to it, right? It's used in the movies and, and all that stuff. And, and a lot of people go into choreography and all that stuff. There seems to be a divide between what people consider to be like real martial arts, touring, unrehearsed, and then performance-based or whatever. Whether it be uh, Dulan or forms, or two-person sets, or staged combat, any of that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes is is kind of cast over here to the side and put in an, in a category that isn't included in martial arts. And um, one of the things that we kind of believe, it's from my background in martial arts, um, is that performance is an integral part of all martial art, from you know cradle to grave. So from the from the least you know uh, uh, for show things that you can think of to the absolute total fabricated performance somebody might do in a movie um performance is all a part of it now uh and it's an important thing to kind of keep in keep in mind um because it tends well as you'll see as we talk about this here the aspects that we take from performance and theatricality and all this other stuff are kind of what give us the spice of everything that differentiates everything. Um, so it kind of defines us um, as human beings. We are performers almost um, by nature of ourselves. So we will start with that there. Let's start here. If we go into um, just just the basic part, the basic part of it. Um, if somebody says, because this is the argument, or not argument, it's just something that's said all the time. Oh, that's just for show, right? And um, as, as we are saying, um, well, really, it's all for show, right? Yeah, are you asking? Yeah. I am, but yes, I'm asking, okay. throwing it out there. So <laughs> So if someone asks me that question, or they say like, oh, you know, let's say I'm practicing my martial arts, and they're like, oh, those forms are they're just for show, you know, it's like, oh, is that really, you know, I'll be just like, okay. Half the time, I don't even entertain it, just because it's just, it's sometimes people's mind are so made up where they have a preconceived idea about what forms and their choreography are for, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the time I feel that, you know, I'm very secure in my relationship with what real is. And sometimes people just want to argue and I'm, I'm not interested in that. Um, is it all for show? Yeah, everything gets shown a result at the end of it. And I really agree that nothing unreal exists. So, the question in itself is kind of loaded. Right. I feel, and I, and, I, and I feel that's unfair because even those of us that are performers still use the term real martial arts versus performer martial arts. And they're both real. They're both, you know, except they're different forms of athleticism. If we look at athletes, 
like when people run into maybe the first performance type of martial art they're going to look at, which would be like you just put in performing kung fu and probably a bunch of wushu videos would come up. They're going to see people in really shiny outfits and the swords that aren't so heavy, and carbon fiber stabs and these types of things, which are very cool, promote athletics and stuff like that. And I would use a carbon fiber staff to bash something with. But that doesn't mean that that athleticism can't be trained into something else. I mean, incredible athletes are incredible athletes. I mean, would you tell a, a soccer player or a football player that they couldn't fight? Right. Well, it, and it really doesn't, you know, when we're, as I said, we're talking about martial art. It's not always all about fighting. If it's not about fighting, is it still martial art? I would argue it is. And I think a lot of people feel guilty when they do, you know, if, if they're doing a form, especially if they're new to, to kind of martial arts, because they'll hear this type of thing, you know, mm -hmm. forms are not good for anything, this, that, and the other, whatever. Um, but people really enjoy it. And if they enjoy something, they do it. And one of the big things that we, that we like to do is do it. And it, also it adds, you know, a ton to your practice. Right. Um, the argument that, that that I think is is salient when when we say it's all for show is that you know whatever your intended purpose is, you're trying to communicate that to somebody else <clears throat> with a martial art, whether you're hitting them or pretending to hit them. Right. I see um, your point there. You know. So. To, you know, in, in, in that kind of thing. Um, and then there was always my, my teacher's my teachers thing. I've said this a couple of times now. Um, whereas I asked him, why, why do you do this, you know, at the end of, of this particular thing? And he said, if you, if you just knock somebody over, you've beat them. But if you end it and then you put, hit that pose, you've beat everybody watching. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Who said that? My, my, my first teacher, Gabriel. Oh, that, that's marvelous. <laughs> yeah. I think also, I mean, we can go through and perhaps make a list, but all of the qualities, like the skills and the attributes that you're developing as you learn to perform set sequences of martial movement, like the, the gain there is, is enormous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was having this conversation with a friend, I think only yesterday, the day before, where we were talking about, you know, what, what would be the purpose of learning like loads and loads and loads and loads of these sequences. And part of it is that, you know, you get to be able to see things in great detail by learning all of these variations of movement, you get to be able to see how other people move. And so in many senses, you're giving yourself this really concrete physical experience of perception and learning how to read. And of course, you will actually have to combine it freestyle with somebody to put that into practice. And it, it's not a given that you immediately have incredible interactive skills. But working on that in tandem with all your free play gives you just so much ability to see. The more you can do with your body, the more you can actually see someone else. And you can predict and etc. So I think like for me, that's the big one that I think is really a, an immediate, obvious and overarching idea of why you would want to learn uh, sequences for performances that are set is in doing that, you get you're extending your own perception. And then you add the stress of doing that well for an audience under yeah, that. that's the right. stress factor is huge. Yeah, right. That, so you're trying to maintain your perception under stress, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. again, managing all of these different variables. You have to know your entire space. You can't let your mind come in on yourself. All of those things have a immediate transfer to the sword play that isn't scripted. You know, either in a tournament or a friendly bout. Yeah, I would argue that the, the 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 skills that you need for both staged combat and quote real combat are identical, right? <clears throat> Doesn't matter if you know if you're standing one one beat out of measure, right? So you don't hit the other guy. 
right? Mm -hmm. It has to look believable. It has to have some basis in, in some, you know, because you everybody, everybody's seen those sword fights and TV shows and stuff like that where you're like, oh, like no, nobody's buying that. <laughs> You know, nobody find that any of these people know how to play with a sword. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's what. However, you train yourself is kind of like your your letters, right? So it's like my letters are going to be the stances I have for my kung fu, right? And then you know, then I'm going to build minimal and forms, which are sentences, and then I'm going to have grammar that goes with that. And so that when I engage in free play, that's how I'm talking to someone. So if all, if, if you don't have a, a, a grammar or a, a language that you fall back on, then you're just kind of shouting nonsense. Like, and, it, and then it only becomes arguing. It doesn't become like a dialogue that happens. That's how I really view it. Now, now a person's vocabulary can be any art form. It doesn't matter, you know. Also, the different ways that you can communicate with that art form performance is one vein to do that. Fighting is another vein with that. Teaching is another vein with that. They're all a stream that we all go down. It's, 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 it comes down to the martial artist has to make the choice of what they want to do with it. And I think that's the huge problem I have with the question in itself. It's that I have a choice to do with what, what I can with it because I can do that, right? One of my first teachers, Michael Boyce, you know, that he said, someone asked him, like, why do you do a backflip? And he's like, because I can. And I'm like, that's cool. Great. And it's, yeah. you know, it's, there's something really important about that. And there's, in that, just don't shame that. Because if you can do something and you show up with what you can do, then cool. I mean, who was that one crazy fighter, that Sakuraba dude who would cartwheel on people, like, way back in the day? Like, that was nutty, but also very, very cool and very, very athletic and also very, very chill. Well, so uh, it's, you know, it's, it's what, what are, what are you going to do with the skills that you have? I think, too, there's a whole element for most of us, at least, most of the time that we're going to do free play with lightsabers or other kinds of sword play to a degree, it's collaborative because like if I'm playing with you, Damon, I hope I'll give you an opportunity to feel challenged and I hope I'll feel challenged and we'll get better. It's unusual that we're immediately going into some sort of dominant scenario, like that's a competition, but most of our time is spent with our colleagues right. trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And so here, under those circumstances, I'm really trying to perform all of this practiced skills as well as possible so that you have the best opportunity to receive that possible. Well, that's, that's kind of like the professional, right? I mean, I would hope that the highest caliber of professional fighters would only fight the other highest of caliber of professional fighters. Right. Unless they get like junk or something, which would be silly to do, you know? And that's, you know, I mean, who, that, then that's just violence. That's just people being angry and violent. That's what, like, what's, what's that going to do? It's like when we, when anyone shows, like an expert, it's like a gun knows another gun, an expert knows another expert. So if people are talking about the reality of like, how real is that? Oh, well, do you mean like these things I was thinking of? It's like, okay, do you mean uh, regulated combat? You're in a ring. Or do you mean um, the awareness of like, I need to know everything around my surroundings. Those are both real things. And the other thing is, is like, oh, are you talking about, I need to just get home and be safe for the night and survive the day, you know? Or are you talking about a life and death situation? All those things are real. And it just depends on what kind of training you have of how you're gonna to adapt to all of those. It's, it's not the law of the excluded middle. It's not like real, unreal. There's this, spectrum that exists and people with certain skills are going to be drawn to different parts of the spectrum right granted i personally feel that everything is like an equilateral triangle if you have an art perform with it know what it's used for and engage other professionals and other practitioners so you can really know 
the advantages and disadvantages of what you know. And it's yeah. not about ego, it's about knowledge. It's just like, let's show up and do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, the, uh, right now, <laughs> we can see the value of solo practice. Right? Yeah. Because nobody has a partner now. Unless you're lucky enough to be, you know, with a spouse or loved one who is also into the same thing as yours. But uh, most of us don't have people to, to spar with right now. What do we do? You know, we have to pretend. We have to make believe. You know, whether it's using a pell, right? There's something that we're hitting, you know, or doing our forms, you know. All, all of that kind of thing. I mean, there's now a lot of value um, that I think people are starting to place on this. Um, and yes, this is an extreme scenario, but like you said, Daniel, most of our time is not spent in martial arts in actual conflict, if we're doing anything right. Um, <clears throat> but it's more, you know, we're trying to... Uh, you know, mitigate that, that event a lot of times too, you know, but. And is it, isn't martial arts, for me, martial arts is a life practice. Yeah. When I teach my students, I'm teaching them a life practice and I run the, you know, the program with the, the youth program. And, the, and it's not something that goes, it's not like I'm expecting these students to be with me for like decades. Maybe some of them will. I mean, who's, what students are around for decades, really, to tell you the truth. But, it's, but it doesn't matter. You show up, doesn't matter the time with, it's, I'm teaching them the awareness of, of just being where they are in the moment and how to, how to do things. Let's see where we call this. You might have to edit this. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. That sucks. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go with my thing here. Is okay. One of the an, another place that we can we can see this kind of intertwining and, and crossing over of, of real and, and, and performance and stuff like that is when actual martial artists are used as stunt doubles in movies, right? The reason they are chosen for that is because they can perform this. Now they're doing it in a rehearsed fashion, right? That doesn't change anything that happens with their skill. You know, every, everything is still there. And those people are still like, if, you know, although Boss Rutan loves to make fun of, of rehearsed martial arts and stuff like that, if he was in a movie, he would have to rehearse a fight, right? Because there's no way you're going to let some dude on set, okay, now just beat each other up for a while and we're going to shoot it. There's a picture that keeps popping up on various TPLA things and uh, Ben Judkins, uh, Ben Cho Sun's stuff which was me and him at i think my use workshop and it's such great evidence of what you practice in solo and seemingly performance contexts because the movement might seem really unlikely actually can come out there's the uh you know backwards cross step into your partner so you, they're uh, followed by lunging this uh you know jie and then uh dian those two uh those two cuts and there's a shot that is on all the tpla stuff every time ben mentions me he seems to put that one up and uh i'm now i have a little notebook of like one things that crop up frequently when i play freely that are from forms and then you know occasionally like you know, one thing comes up I don't know, six times in a three to five minute round. And then another maybe comes up two times. So I've started to keep track of that because uh, it, it really reveals the usefulness of, in the case I'm here, I'm talking about Chinese martial arts, like we've received all these old sets. Why do they contain the, un the seemingly unreal and very optimistic kind of moves that they contain? And yet there's now one of them that like I routinely score a point on the hand with that with that back cross step and so i use, use it all the time um so i think it's really worth keeping track of those things that's really interesting idea i never thought about doing that that's cool well there's actually that's actually in fencing in in sport fencing um 
I don't know how legal it is in Olympic style, but I have seen where they take a very long back step. They'll even put their hand on the ground so that they can get extra reach, like coming underneath. So they come up and then just they dip down and they go for that same thing. Well, wow, that looks like right. some pretty sounds like some pretty good athletic training. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, so it's it's in granted we're talking about weapons work, right? And then you know, I mean, there's so many. It's it's kind of you know this this conversation is kind of like you get that student, you show them something, they're like, well, what if I did this? What if I did that? Right. This counter to this counter to that counter to this counter to that counter to that counter. I'm like, yeah. Uh huh, and then you give them a full cup of tea because their cup's already full, mm -hmm. and yep. it, it's and it'd be like, mm -hmm. very, very good, very good. Here's your cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mm -hmm. and you're out. You know, it's it's it's. Are you here to train? Or are you here to argue? Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Anthony often says, uh, "Don't try to beat the drill." Yeah. Right. The drill is there to teach you something. Just to follow, follow the rules and do, I had, it was funny because I had, I had a guy that I learned uh, Chen, Chen style from and he was one of these guys that, it, you know, we'd start doing toy show and we would start off at one level and then he would raise the level without saying anything and i'm like oh, okay and so we just kept going up like that and so finally i just broke off of them and said okay wait 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 wait. so what are we trying to do here are, are, are we pushing hands are we fighting you know anything like this because if you want i can just and you know i just come in like that and it's like and then it's over so i mean what exactly are we doing um but yeah it's, i mean it's a little off, off track but the point is is um that you you have to you have to know that there are base base things base skills base abilities that you need to have to be successful in say martial arts if you say general martial arts we mean anything from staged combat to, to whatever there are certain things that you always need to know do you do you need to know your timing and your distance for staged combat of course you do you don't want to kill your 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 coat you know your actors and all that do you need to know uh you know um, how to you know how to you know how the body moves and you know and all that kind of stuff in a kind of a dancing like fashion for, for boxing i don't know ask all the boxers that take ballet and take ballroom dancing to improve their footwork you know um there's a you know there's a, there's a whole lot that can be that can be done like that so um but yeah, yeah i mean essential i think you're you hit on a point there that you know essential basics are essential basics and you know again it's how do you want to apply those but in any application of a martial practice you're going to need speed timing foundation strength awareness and also it's it's if we only say martial arts is just about fighting there's all these philosophical bettering oneself aspects of martial arts which as we get older you know me yeah. being right up i'm you know i'm 46 now and so you know the last thing i'm thinking about really is jumping in a ring with somebody Oh God. Not that I haven't done my fair share of sparring when I was younger, doing the stuff with other martial artists in that way. Yeah. It's, you know. but, but it's, it's an art for me now. It's not just about bashing things. And if, if people only want to bash things, that's just sad. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, that's, you know, fighting is fighting. Yeah. yeah, and it's and what's gonna what's gonna come out of you? Like I don't know what would come out of me if someone broke into my house and tried to take the life of my family. I have no idea. I've never been in a situation that dangerous before. Right. You know, and you know, however, I am 
confident in my ability to respond the way I need to. And I think that comes down to it is if you're confident, and I'm also confident to go on stage. So it's, it's how do you practice in yourself to be just confident? I'm also confident to show up at work at the Trader Joe's I work at and put cans on the shelf. You know, it's like, it's, it's life practice, dudes. You know, it's, and there's no shortcuts about it. You practice and you train and the way is in practice. And as you train, the way re reveals itself to you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, great things happen. And I think you just become a better person. And for me, the lightsaber community, as I have said numerous things, and even in the old documentary years ago that I was in, it was an experiment mm -hmm. about applying these types of aspects of training and value to a very different worldview and it works and people are going to discover a lot by coming into that and there's no wrong or right about it it's just what are you going to do right. it's 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 hard for me to have a conversation about this and that because they're just both there let's let's can we just keep going yeah no it's true you know what i'm saying yeah that, that's not for us here but that's just the people in general so right right no exactly and, and that's you know the value of you know of, of things is is very rarely you know appreciated until you get you know further down the line oh hey what was the thing daniel the the, the video of that musician from india and she says oh. we have been taught competi competition not appreciation do you remember that quote yeah. That she yeah 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 this is a classical indian singer who's uh, apparently very well known i didn't know her till i saw that video but she's also quite young and there's a lot of complaint in the traditional indian music community apparently that oh young people don't get it and young people aren't trying and then people who add beats or contemporary stylings to the music are in some way pandering and she was very, uh, very critical of all of these stances and said something along the lines of, uh, yeah, the, the way people are brought up. Oh yeah, it was the, the young people's intolerance of silence in music. And she said, you know, we've created this very stressful society where people are constantly told to compete with one another. And like their parents in school are competing with each other for their kids' results. And you expect these kids to appreciate silence. That's insane. We've made them competitive. When does uh, you know the top student of the class get another student coming up to him and congratulating? Never. They're all jealous. So I thought it was actually. I'm not sure the exact relation between this. You know, appreciating silence. Uh, well, you know, when you're, I, in a stressed world and what that has to do with lightsaber. But like, I'm sure there's something in there that we can no, no. we can thread. I think it's a great point. Silence can be, of course, in timing. Silence is used for timing music, of course, you know. And um, but it's also like, you know, I think why well, people are drawn to this real, unreal thing, and I never thought about it this way until we just all sat down here, is that when you fight and you right, there is a you you are you are competing against that. Sometimes when you're performing, granted to get a position in a major, let's say, dance company or acting company, there's competition getting there of a different sort. But when you're on stage, let's say, especially if you're doing a solo, that's a very different type of competition because you have to really get out of the way of yourself to do things correctly. And that is very, very, and thinking about society being so complex and so noisy, it's much easier to just, them to stop and be like, wow, now I'm going to confront this in myself. And so, hey. Yeah. That's the know, same not thing. to say that fighters, professional fighters don't confront things in themselves. They absolutely do, 100%. Everyone in the arena who does martial arts hopefully does that with the practice, no matter what shape or form that it is. But I think to the, to the young person, and I mean young in, as someone who's not having a lot of time in martial arts in general, I think they might gravitate towards seeing just the, 
the fighting as a, a result of how to get in relationship with conflict. You know, performance can lead you to there because of the ability you have to, of the fear you have to confront to get on, on stage. You know, it just depends on where you want to start. Yeah. I think something that uh, occurs to me listening to you, Damon, is this like two qualities of silence that you can bring to things. Um, you know, if you just spend a lot of time by yourself, but you haven't been engaged in a physical practice, your mental silence is really kind of small and easily troubled. Whereas I'm sure you guys, and I think even beginning students will have had this experience of doing some solo sword play for you know, 20, 40 minutes, an hour or longer, and coming to whatever they do next with this incredible mental space and silence mm -hmm. and ability to incorporate new information. And it's not directly performance, I would say, but like solo practice that is scripted in some way really gives you that mental silence. You know, yeah, been, yeah, you've got parameters beautiful. and you just, you know, you follow the parameters and then you realize, oh, wow, it's so quiet in here. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's crystal deep. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a paradox. I've noticed that with the, it, by constraining what you do, you free yourself up. Yeah, so, all great art yeah. needs constraint. Yeah, so it's it's like people, I think, tend, especially when they're first starting to come into it and they don't understand, it's a complicated world, you know? What is what is all this stuff? And it's and with martial arts, especially with weapons, it's not something that we have everyday access to. You know, most people walking around are never going to be in a fight, um, even. And with swords, what? No. Um, like we said, like I was saying, um, I've said a couple of times, right now, this day and age, the place that you have the most likelihood of being run through by, by a sword is in a play. So, you know, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is the real scenario, <laughs> right? Who's putting their actual life at risk, you know? Um, and that's, that has nothing to do with anything. It just has to do with the circumstances of things. Right? That's an anachronism. You know, people don't do that anymore. It doesn't mean that people can't do that anymore. I right? think your mentioning of these strict variables too, like performance training, where you're adjusting your variables or you're trained to adjust variables, very helpful in competition. Damon's earlier example about um, fencing, I was, I, you know, I, what I know about real Olympic fencing is very, very small and uh, my wonderful friend who's a fencing master scott nichols i was at his sal like his his uh his club and he said oh well you know go and fight so and so use a saber you'll be fine and there were all these moves on the piece that are not legal and so you know i kept scoring with things that i'm not allowed to do and you know after five minutes of thinking i was really good at something i'd never done before someone came over and explained to me actually you shouldn't be doing x y and z and the performance training which is to you know make yourself behave according to certain parameters when you're practicing by yourself was really helpful because i could adjust to a rule set that say we don't use in blonde bing and we don't use in the oh, right. rules so being able to switch like your performance training gives you that ability that oh you know like this is actually before our conversation, Damon, but before uh, we started recording this conversation, you were talking about taking a dance piece all around Europe and performing on different stages that were really different one from the next. So your piece is still set, but suddenly your stage is on a rake. Yeah. So you have to be able to adjust. No one is going to rebuild the stage for you. Mm -hmm. So that ability to switch is extremely useful and you can, well, it's essential and you can train it in you know sort of incremental ways with all of the uh the parameters that you can put on yourself when you're doing your solo practice. and you have to train it in incremental ways like anything anything takes time hard work over time <laughs> yeah i mean and, and whether it be a form you know or, or anything like that you have people think, seem to think that these things are frozen in time, right? A form is a form and that's what it is. 
That's just right? silly. But you do you you perform that form different every single time that you approach it, right? The, when I was touring, mm -hmm. I did the show that I was touring with over seven hundred times. Mm -hmm. Okay, changing locations a lot and <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so it's like yeah, and same thing. It's like when I look at my martial arts, I've done my 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 beach one or my monkey style or my stray sword or whatever. It's like I've done those things like innumerable times, and they're very different. When I was young, and they should be. That's yeah. evolution. Yeah, and that's the thing too. People, what I'm saying is, people think that that does not allow you to practice adaptation. But that, that's actually a better place to practice adaptation, even more than something like sparring in, in this particular sense, because it allows you to think about it and realize what you've been doing. I, you know, I'm gonna do this form here on this different terrain. Wow, that's a bizarre, that's really weird. Yeah, yeah. You get the, I think that's you, it's a, a good thing that I think that you wanna break patterns of your by different drills and expand your vocabulary by really doing unorthodox training methods with everything that you do. Right. Like, and try doing a form. I like doing a form in like a wooded area where you don't have an open thing, but you can kind of go between trees. So it's just a matter of kind of altering your steps a little bit, but it takes, it, you know, it's hard, you know, because you have these obstacles that you're kind of going in and out of. Totally. Something that I've been doing, I have one of those brass uh, hanging pals, so it's a pendulum, and I've been working with a timer, so I'll give myself a three-minute round of really some, uh, the room I have is not very big, I can't do a whole form, but I'll do some set work, three minutes, and then three minutes playing with this pal, and just trying to improvise and fit in with the situation of the swinging object, not trying out particular techniques on it and then back to the set techniques and initially it was really they were really separate there was i'm drilling and i'm improvising after about 40 minutes of coming and going with that suddenly things that i had worked on earlier started to appear in the improvisation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. mentally the space between you know now i will do 25 of these for three minutes and i'm just playing that mental space collapsed and i, I didn't feel different so alternation between, you know, working in a set way, and if you have a partner, you can go set, partner, set, partner. That kind of training really allows you to see, oh, what's, what's the whole parameter of what I'm playing with? Not just, oh, okay, there's competition, and then there's what Yeah, and doing? oftentimes when, when stuck rigidly like that, it's, I mean, you have to get beyond the masterpiece complex. It's like, for some reason, I don't, I don't know why people are always looking for the supreme technique. And maybe, maybe people aren't doing it so much anymore looking for that. Maybe more people are adaptable now or just, or just training, you know? It, but I mean, I went through that phase too. Sure. You know, everyone goes through that phase and you keep training and, and, and you grow and you be cool and you, you just better yourself. And it's, hmm. The important, I want to address this once, the importance of just performing. Mm -hmm. I think one of the main reasons to perform, especially in the lightsaber community, is it helps you regulate your fight or flight response in a very different way. It's like everything that, um, it's, it's like, yeah, changing, changing locations like I did. It's like you, you start changing your parameters. It also, it also allows you to start thinking of in a, in a contingency way. You know, if something goes wrong, how are you going to keep yourself on track with the parameters that you set out while dealing with the problem? Someone drops their weapon or all of a sudden, like I remember during one show, like my arm just kind of stopped working and I had to do a lot of this one arm. And and I had to modify them, you know, and and, and vary them. And it's it's you gotta that's super helpful because you never know what's going to happen when you're engaging in type of confrontation. Yeah. yeah. It's, Even a kind of stress. it's a kind of stress. And one of yeah. the things that lots of the, 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 the reality people who like to, to preach that kind of stuff talk about performing things under stress and yeah, pressure tested. And of course, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, you see, you can reduce some of these fighters 
to Jello by having them say two lines on a stage, right? Where all of that bravado and everything like that, you know, when taken out of the familiar context, becomes crippling. The familiar yeah. context, yeah, yeah. What was the thing that I was talking about earlier from the Dow politics? Mm -hmm. Right and wrong are situational. In the appropriate situation, nothing is wrong. Without the appropriate situation, nothing is right. Right. And so this is, this is a kind of, I mean, really this real performance thing, I think, is like a chicken and the egg argument at the time with martialists and culturalists and all the rest of it. And um, I put out there, yeah, I think anyone, like, what, what are you going to, what are you going to show up with and where and why? Right. Know thyself. But, but, you know, I think really what it comes down to is, especially with, with novices and people who are beginning, is people, I think, feel like they need to establish themselves as valid, right? And what they're doing is valid, right? Mm -hmm. So they're always, they make these distinctions because they want to kind of separate themselves from something and be able to like say, okay, that's fake, I'm real, or whatever designation they put into it that's valuable, that's invaluable, whatever, you know. Um, and I think that's a lot of where, you know, where it comes from is that, that, that thing. Uh, there's a saying that I've heard a lot, I don't know, it's Chinese, in 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 general, um, I don't know who said it. They said, Perf if if everything is in a state of constant change, then perfection, if it is obtainable at all, is only obtainable for the the smallest of seconds, right? Because as soon as you attain perfection, then immediately it changes into something else. Change is our only protection. So. You know, it's, it's just like when we're talking about language too. It's like, you, you know, our, you know, oh, this word means this. In what context? <laughs> you, you know, who's saying it? Who's listening to it? You know? Yeah. I mean, when you do what you do in your training also affects very much what it's going to mean. You know, we're cognitively fresh at the beginning. So if you're doing solo performance material, like a doulon at the beginning of your training probably it's working on all kinds of excellent neuromuscular things if you do that later on in your training it's going to be mostly your endurance because you're fatigued you know if you're going to training you'd start with power then you go to strength and you go to endurance then you go to flexibility and then you know you have a glass of water and do the whole cycle again but that cycling depending on what you're doing when its meaning shifts very much Mm -hmm. And so the same thing that might look very much like, oh, I'm doing this to have, you know, the skill to delight people with my doulon. If I'm doing it at the end of my training period and I'm just doing, banging it out, it's like, no, I'm doing this for my wind, you mm -hmm. know, and for my, to see what it's like when my grip is starting to go, can I keep doing these repetitions? Very, very different experience. So like, like both of you just said, if we change the parameters and the context, we can use the same material for very 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 different things so it'd be wrong to assume like oh this doulon is only ever practiced because we're going to present it to other people we might be practicing it for all kinds of reasons you know right. you can put weights on yourself yeah we, yeah we should practice it for all kinds of reasons Anyways, um one thing if you want to edit this in is that um finding inspiration out of the art form mm -hmm. right so it's like if you know when when I, let me see, so when it comes to, let's take grappling, right? So my first art was jujitsu, dance out of the jujitsu. And I was good at it, I guess, I did all right. But I didn't really understand a lot more until I started really doing partnering with other dancers. There was a sensitivity there that I couldn't, it's not that it's not there in the art, it's that I needed a different language to teach it to me. Mm -hmm. And that, I needed that dance partner and that type of connecting with the center to make reciprocated movements in a very way that wasn't me trying to achieve an objective with the throw perhaps. And I can't explain it 
I want to think a little bit longer, maybe come back to it in the future. However, the main point of it is that having a different art form informed me, me of a sensitivity that I didn't even know I had, that I could go back to and apply it to a, a root form that now I enjoy practicing as I get older much more than I did in my youth. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, so things outside of where you start often will always bring you back to that beginning, I think, if you're practicing with integrity. Yeah, I think and, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, finishing up, I think one of the most important things here too is when you're doing things, if you do things from other people, like if you do a set routine, um, whether it's a solo routine or something like that, if you didn't make it up, then you're kind of seeing something through somebody else's eyes, right? And that's always a valuable thing. When, like, to continue the value of performance in this type of thing, if you're performing, you're, you're, you're thinking about certain things, you're going to do things that maybe you wouldn't do in the other way because you're not confident of it or whatever. Performance gives you a chance to kind of perform these things the way that you want to do them because you can, yes, you can, you can set up these scenarios, right? Um, is that very much different than just drilling something? It's, it, it really isn't. Um, but the other really, really important thing to take away think here, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll head out for the evening, is that the performance aspect of all of this should not, don't, don't feel bad about incorporating it, right? You're, you're using a lightsaber. Well, I mean, we're wearing Jedi robes, and, you know, doing cosplay and all kinds of, st all, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, for us to bring up any auspices of, you know, oh, well, that's not real enough for me is pretty silly. Um, but I don't think that's really the majority of people out there. I think that the majority of people out there want to do this want to perform with or do the performance type of things with the fancy stuff the stuff that's that's for show and can get people to go ooh and ah right i think a lot of people want to do that i think a lot of people who say they don't want to do that also want to do that yeah a lot of it is just first as rollo may would talk about um having the courage to create yeah so and that is really i mean blank canvas man yeah <laughs> now we're not telling you to go out there and just, you know, do whatever you want. Build, build, build stuff up to it, right? Build your, your, your palette, build your, your, your knowledge base and all of that. And you can apply it in any way. You can apply it to perform. You can provide to fight, to defend yourself, all of this. The application of what you're doing, of the art, is not the art itself, right? The map is not the terrain. It's as simple as that. But great stuff to be had through, through, through performance. We're going to be getting more into that and showing that more. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing these guys even more in the future here. Thank you guys for chatting with me here. Um, Thank you. This was really great. Yeah. Awesome. We'll be, yeah, we're going to be doing more and more of these. I'll be coming here with Marshall Chats, especially during, the, during our, our time of, of shut-in. Um, but uh, – from all of us here at uh, Terra Prime, we'll say adieu. So, patience, practice, perseverance, and happy sabering. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Bye. Then.